Welcome back to the Wizard Shop. Today we're going to do an update on War Turtle, and we're also going to show you something really interesting we found on a 2013 SL550 right after this. The time has come on War Turtle to pull the headliner down and put a new headliner on it because it was really bothering me flapping around and it's starting to touch the top of my bald head and that's when I said enough I'm taking this thing down. So for many of you out there that are driving a car where the headliner sagging and it's in the back of your mind you're like one of these days I'd like to pull that down and and redo that I wonder how tough that would be. And we're going to show you today as we found out it can be a lot more difficult than it looks. Let's take a look inside of War Turtle. So as you can see, we have the headliner removed in here, and there's a ton of stuff that has to come off to get the headliner out of here. You don't notice all the little bits and bobs and pieces that all have to come off that are actually holding the headliner up. Number one, the rear view mirror. The sunroof switch to operate the sunroof. The driver's and passenger side sun visors. The driver's and passenger's grab handles that go right here. All kinds of little bits and pieces and plastic parts and clips that go to various different things. Two cup holders full. We got the side pillar covers. We got the trim piece that goes along the top here on both sides, driver and passenger. And some of these things can be very difficult to remove. And one of the possibilities, especially on an older car like War Turtle, is that clips and plastic things break and snap. Be very careful. Like these little plastic tabs that slide into something, you could easily snap those off. We have the clips out of these. You could break this entire housing here that holds a clip that could easily just break off. They go inside these clips here, the little white clips. If you get too rough with it, you could snap and break that, and then it won't never fit tight again. So it's something to be very careful with. It wouldn't be the end of the world, but you'd hear it rattling and drive you insane when you're going down the road. This is also a good time while we're looking in this portion of the car is to clean your sunroof drains, which are right here. This little hose. When this fills with water up here from rain, Believe it or not, these glass on any car is not watertight. None of them are. There is no car on earth that has a watertight sunroof. That's why they have this drain pan and a drain tube. These frequently get plugged with debris and get plugged up, and it can't drain to the ground anymore, and now it starts overflowing into your lap. You get water literally raining on you while you're driving. So. It's raining outside and it's still raining on you, even though you're inside of a car. So take compressed air and lightly blow these out and clean out of any debris that's in there. And just place them back on. There's two of them, one on each side. It kind of sounds like that Jeep we used to have. Yeah, it was an 06 Jeep Commander. We were out shopping one day and it literally started Niagara Falls raining on us. It was very miserable. All because these little tubes were clogged up with debris. So make sure you take the chance now to clean those out on whatever car you're working on. Don't miss that chance. We're not done yet, there's more. Seatbelt holder, it goes up here. That has to come off to get this pillar off because it sits on top of this trim piece right here sits, it's like a Y-shaped trim piece sits on top of the headliner, holds it in. These rear pillars have to be dropped down, not necessarily removed, but you do have to drop them down so you can get the headliner removed out of there. This center slide portion here of the sunroof itself, this is the sun cover, I guess you call it. We're not going to remove that. We're just going to put a piece of fab, clean it all up and put a piece of fabric on it, the fabric that I'm using, and just glue it up in place. It's a lot of work to get this apart. This is actually a lot easier when you don't have a sunroof, but this one's a little harder because of it. So on this weather strip, you have to pull these down because the lip actually pushes 
against the headliner right here. And you'll fight that all day long until you finally say, okay, you win and pull it down. It's okay to let these hang if you have a sedan, all four doors will have to be that way. If you have TVs or screens or anything else up on your roof, that stuff has to come down too. And you will soon realize after you remove everything, you have a five gallon bucket full to the brim of parts and pieces just to get your headliner down. The next step, once you get the headliner just kind of laying there, how do you get it out of there? You have to find the largest opening, which on this car is the rear hatch, not really the doors. But you kind of have to just kind of fold it, not break it in half, but lightly fold it and pull it out. The doors are pretty big on here. You could probably use the doors if you want to but on a car with smaller doors or not as tall doors, you're gonna to have to find your largest opening because the factory got it in there, you'll have to figure out how to get it out. Just be very careful however you choose to get it out of your car that you don't bend it or crease it because then it won't shape right and it won't sit against the ceiling right and you could damage it. Gently curl it, but don't just force it and bend it in half. It's not that strong, it's just like fiberboard. It'll break, crack, so be careful with that actually have the headliner out and we're halfway done putting the fabric on. Let's go take a look at it. Now we're going to talk about actually what you do to remove the old headliner and then glue on the new one. This is the fabric that I bought. It's just actually was on clearance in some place in California. As you can see it's got a silver metallic sheen to it and it is smooth vinyl. It's not fabric really. So if you get anything dirty on it, you can just wipe it off. It doesn't stain it. That's what my goal was with this. Let me set this aside. The glue you're going to be using, what we use is the 3M Super 77. It's just a very, very strong adhesive. You spray it on both sides of the things you're gluing together and you let it get almost dry tacky and then you put them, put them together. You don't put it on wet. You let it almost dry 30 seconds or a minute. Then you put them together. You glue both sides and glue it together. This is a very good glue for this. 3M makes some of the best adhesives there is. You want to use a really good quality adhesive for your headliner because you gotta think on a hot summer day, it's literally gonna be 140 in your car, maybe higher. And it's also possible in the middle of winter if you live in Alaska or something that it could get minus 20 in your car. Those drastic changes can cause glue to just give up and just say, and start drooping again. Make sure you use a really good quality glue. This is very strong once it dries and it's not affected by temperature so much as if you were to use some contact cement or something. So we have half of this done. I typically won't do the whole thing all at once because it's just too large of an area and if you make a mistake and you accidentally lay the fabric down and it bonds before you can get over there and straighten everything out and it's, it can be a real mess. So if you have a really big headliner, do a third at a time. This one's small enough, we're gonna do half of it. We've already done half. And then I'll show you kind of what you do on the other half to get the rest in. This half, which is the rear half, has already been done. We're gonna show you here in a minute the process of gluing it down, but I'm showing you a finished product on the rear section here. Once it's all dried, and it's usually a day or two to be sure that it's cured. Like you see here, there's a lot of floppy excess. You want that on purpose so there's plenty of fabric as you push it down and flatten it out. Then once it's dry, you take a razor blade and just gently go around the edges and trim the excess off. And as you can see, we have a nice flat application here. And you have to cut out your little holes. Here's where some dome lights went. Don't forget to cut out your holes. You'll get the headliner up and go, oh crap, I forgot to cut those holes out. Luckily, you can just real quick cut that hole out and take care of it. So as you can see, this is the bare headliner board. It's kind of like a fiber board. It's kind of fragile. If I wanted to, I could just snap it and break it over and crease it, but we're not going to do that. When you go to peel the fabric off, it's gonna leave behind this foamy, rotten, deteriorated foam. If you rub your hands on it, it just makes a mess and goes everywhere. You have to remove all that and clean it completely cleaned up before you apply a new headliner. Because if you try to glue new fabric to that foamy stuff, 
it just peels the foam off and the fabric falls back off again. You just ruined your fabric, you have to start all over again. You have to take a plastic or a very soft wire brush and go through and, and just scrape and clean the entire headliner, all of it, before you even start doing anything. And you want it to where you rub your hand on it and there's no more of that deteriorated foam all over your hands. As you can see here, it's completely clean down to the bare fiber board. That's the way you want it. So when you put your glue on, you're gluing clean fabric to clean fiber board with no debris in between. I'm not going to glue anything right now because I'm not ready for that yet, but I'm going to show you if we were going to go ahead and glue this fabric, we would put a nice even coat over the fiber board. We would also lift up the fabric and spray a nice even coat over it. And then we would let that dry for about a minute until it gets tacky. You, you want it tacky to where when you try to touch it, it doesn't peel the glue off with your hand. It just tries to stick your hand to it. That's the way you want it. Once you get it to that point, then you pull the fabric over. Start with the center. You're going to have to have a buddy to help you. You're going to have to hold up the corners, maybe even a couple of buddies. Start in the center with your hand or with some gloves on if you want. Definitely if it's fabric that can get stained. You want clean glove hands. You don't want to smear stains all over your new fabric. Do you want to start in the center and work your way out, pushing it all through the different creases and folds and things until you get to the edges. Once you get everything laid flat, don't start cutting the holes out for all your accessories and things. Let it dry for a couple of days. When you come back and you try to lightly peel on it and it's very strong, you can tell that it's nicely adhered now. You can take a razor blade, a sharp razor blade, and go through and cut your holes out. Also, you can go along the outside edge and cut your excess fabric off. Once you're done with all that, then you can reassemble inside the car. So, we just went through a huge, huge rigmarole to do a headliner. And the purpose of this video is for you guys who are thinking, I think this weekend I'll tackle my headliner. It's probably going to be a lot longer than a weekend. Because as you can see, you have to let stuff dry overnight. And you have to come back and do the trimming and cutting. And you're going to have to have buddies help you to get it out, to do the fabric, and also to put it back in. Especially if it's a minivan or something, it's a really big headliner. You're going to need some buddies to help you with that. So, as you can see, a headliner job is not an afternoon job. It's really a big job. You wouldn't think it would be. I've done a few of these in, in the past, and every time I'm like, wow, this is a lot of work. This is crazy. And it really is a lot of work to do a headliner. So if you do take it to a shop and say, here's my car, here's the keys, I want the headliner done, and they say, okay, it'll be a grand, don't get mad at them. As you've just seen, it really is a lot of work. It's worth a thousand bucks. It's hours and hours of labor. That's where we're at with War Turtle right now. We're actually almost finished with War Turtle. I have an exhaust tip to put on and maybe a few other little things here or there. And then I'm done with him. He's, the car will be at the level that I want it. I'm totally happy with it. And I'm just going to drive the thing and enjoy it. It's really, really fun to drive. I wanted to show you guys something interesting on an SL550 that came in the shop just the other day. So just the other day, a customer brought us a 2013 SL550 that you see behind me. And he's having trouble getting his convertible top to work. Every time he tried to use it, it would show a warning on the dash that said the trunk is still open. But it wasn't open. It was physically closed like it is now and locked. He's already been through, had the latch replaced, the struts replaced inside, a whole bunch of work and it still doesn't work. And he finally threw in the towel and said, here's my car, car wizard, you and your guys, you figure this out, I'm done. And we have figured it out, it's fixed. But I wanna show you guys what we found. Let's take a look, let me open the trunk. So Michael has spent a lot of time at a Mercedes dealership and I thought, well, this is a perfect job to throw his way. He's familiar with these cars and he totally knocked it out of the park, he figured out what was wrong, and it is fixed now. We went through all kinds of the sensors and all kinds of things and, and finally found the problem. What did you start with? 
So I started by checking out the trunk lid latch switch. So there's two switches on these cars. One of them was from the rear SAM. And that's actually checking a rotary sensor switch inside this latch. And that checked out okay. The other is an opening position sensor, and that's in one of the struts. And I was having issues where my sensor tested okay, but I was still getting an open message. So I decided I needed to check the wiring. And what I ended up finding was on the right and on the left side, the wires were broken. And it's just a common issue, and it's been on the 230 chassis, on these 231s. It's been something that Mercedes has been dealing with for a little while. So it's quite a high bill for fixing a bundle of wires. You think, wow, it's that much money, several hundred dollars to get a few wires fixed. But it took us hours. It took Michael hours and hours to get down to the bottom of it. Is it this switch? Is it this? Is it a software issue? Is it this? Is it that? And you finally have to deduce it down. And we, whenever we would move the trunk, we would see these lights go dim or die. They would completely lose power. And that's when he decided that he started checking these higher checking these harnesses that go along the hinges on both sides, you remove the sheathing off, boom, there's a bunch of broken wires. That kind of issue on multiple different makes and models can happen where there's wiring that's ran along hinges and as you open and close the trunk over and over again, it finally breaks wires. Minivans have this issue with a bundle that goes along the back or SUVs with automatic opening doors in the back, sliding doors or older cars can have that problem with front doors or the wiring loom that goes to the door itself, broken wires, it's a common issue. So be careful if you're doing stuff at home or having a friend work on it or even a shop work on it. It could be very simple to fix. You don't have, oh, it needs a new latch, it needs a new this, it needs a new that. It might be behoove you to just go ahead and let a shop diagnose it. But we've got the wires repaired. We've proven that it wasn't any other problems, but just broken wires. So we'll get the trunk closed. So we got the trunk closed. We'll go ahead and let Michael demonstrate that we have indeed repaired the problem. Right. Boom, there you have it. Another car solved. Problem solved, kind of like Unsolved Mysteries on TV, the show that used to be on. Solved at Omega Auto Clinic. That's really fun to watch. Let's watch it again, Michael. Let's make it go back up to its normal position. Very cool. It's a lot quieter than R129 chassis, all the click, clock, check, chock, check, chock, <laughs> all stuff going on. Definitely. And they just don't spray you in the face with hydraulic fluid either. <laughs> so, showed you guys what we were doing with War Turtle. We got the headliner almost done. It'll go back in pretty soon. And I wanted to, you guys to check this out, that it turned out to be just broken wires. It wasn't thousands of dollars of, of this and this and that, and it needs to be replaced the whole system. It was just wires. That's all it was. Michael's been doing an excellent job, very happy with the work. And if you're interested in what kind of tools you use, check our link, Amazon Affiliates link below. If you haven't, click the subscribe button already. Go ahead and do that now. We got many more unsolved mysteries to come. Thanks for watching.